Adolf Hitler. In order to explain his role in the making of history, we must go back to the beginning, or near beginning. Hitler was a veteran of the Great War who felt deeply let down by his country leaders, who, in the opinion of many in the German army had accepted a humiliating armistice agreement in 1918. As a result, Germany became burdened with reparations that were simply impossible to pay. In this video, we are going to see the moments in history which changed humanity. To do this, we have chosen Adolf Hitler and how he caused havoc and destruction, a part of which can be seen even today. Not wanting to follow in his father's footsteps as a civil servant, he began struggling in secondary school and eventually dropped out. Alois, Hitler's father, died in 1903, and Adolf pursued his dream of being an artist though he was rejected from Vienna's Academy of Fine Arts though Hitler was only 14 at the time. After his mother, Clara, died in 1908, Hitler moved to Vienna, where he pieced together a living painting scenery and monuments and selling the images. Lonely, isolated and a voracious reader, Hitler became interested in politics during his years in Vienna, and developed many of the ideas that would shape Nazi ideology. In 1913, Hitler moved to Munich, in the German state of Bavaria. When World War I broke out the following summer, he successfully petitioned the Bavarian king to be allowed to volunteer in a reserve infantry regiment. Deployed in October 1914 to Belgium, Hitler served throughout the Great War and won two decorations for bravery, including the rare Iron Cross First Class, which he wore to the end of his life. Hitler was wounded twice during the conflict. He was hit in the leg during the Battle of the Somme in 1916 and temporarily blinded by a British gas attack near Ypres in 1918. A month later, he was recuperating in a hospital at Peswak, northeast of Berlin, when news arrived of the armistice and Germany's defeat in World War I. Like many Germans, Hitler came to believe the country's devastating defeat could be attributed not to the Allies, but to insufficiently patriotic traitors at home, a myth that would undermine the post-war Weimar Republic and set the stage for Hitler's rise. Towards the end of the Great War as WW1 was then known, waves of workers' strikes crippled munitions factories across the country. In young Hitler's mind, these strikes snatched defeat from the jaws of certain victory. His anger wasn't directed at the workers in general, but instead socialist Jewish Marxists, whom he believed were responsible for trying to cripple Germany. The aftermath of the Treaty of Versailles saw Germany plunge into an unprecedented economic depression, Hyperinflation was rife with the now famous images of men carrying home their pitiful wages in a wheelbarrow. The Weimar government that presided over German affairs at the time was weak, many including Hitler's fledgling Nazi party tried to overthrow the government. For his part Hitler was thrown in jail, and it was during his time in captivity that his hatred of Jews and Bolsheviks grew even more. He believed that Jewish bankers were responsible for the rises in capitalist powers through their money lending and pursuit of profit. Eventually, Hitler became obsessed with the notion of restoring all life on Earth to some sort of supposed natural order. He attempted to recreate a supposed master human race of blonde hair and blue eyes that could eventually breed impure stock out of existence. These ghastly ideas led to a second global war that shook the planet and nearly ceased life on all fronts, but thanks to great heroes fighting against Hitler's tyranny, this didn't take place. After Hitler returned to Munich in late 1918 from the war, he joined the Small German Workers' Party, which aimed to unite the interests of the working class with a strong German nationalism. His skilled oratory and charismatic energy helped propel him in the party's ranks, and in 1920 he left the army and took charge of its propaganda efforts. In one of Hitler's strokes of propaganda genius, the newly renamed National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi Party, adopted a version of the ancient symbol of the Hackenkreuz, or hooked cross, as its emblem. Printed in a white circle on a red background, Hitler's swastika would take on terrifying symbolic power in the years to come. By the end of 1921, Hitler led the growing Nazi party, capitalizing on widespread discontent with the Weimar Republic and the punishing terms of the Versailles Treaty. Many dissatisfied former army officers in Munich would join the Nazis, notably Ernst Röhm, who recruited the strong arm squads, known as the Sturmabteilung, which Hitler used to protect party meetings and attack opponents. The Beer Hall Putsch On the evening of November 8, 1923, members of the Sturmabteilung and others forced their way into a large beer hall where another right-wing leader was addressing the crowd. 
Wielding a revolver, Hitler proclaimed the beginning of a national revolution and led marchers to the center of Munich, where they got into a gun battle with police. Hitler fled quickly, but he and other rebel leaders were later arrested. Even though it failed spectacularly, the Beer Hall Putsch established Hitler as a national figure, and, in the eyes of many, a hero of right-wing nationalism. Mein Kampf Tried for treason, Hitler was sentenced to five years in prison, but would serve only nine months in the relative comfort of Landsberg Castle. During this period, he began to dictate the book that would become, Mein Kampf, My Struggle, the first volume of which was published in 1925. The Aryan Race Obsessed with race and the idea of ethnic purity, Hitler saw a natural order that placed the so-called Aryan race at the top. For him, the unity of the Volk, the German people, would find its truest incarnation not in democratic or parliamentary government, but in one supreme leader, or Führer. Hitler's private army, the Schutzstaffel. By the time Hitler left prison, economic recovery had restored some popular support for the Weimar Republic, and support for right-wing causes like Nazism appeared to be waning. Over the next few years, Hitler laid low and worked on reorganizing and reshaping the Nazi party. He established the Hitler Youth to organize youngsters, and created the Schutzstaffel as a more reliable alternative to the SA members of the SS wore black uniforms and swore a personal oath of loyalty to Hitler. After 1929, under the leadership of Heinrich Himmler, the SS would develop from a group of some 200 men into a force that would dominate Germany and terrorize the rest of occupied Europe during World War II. The Third Reich In 1932, Hitler ran against the war hero Paul von Hindenburg for president, and received 36.8% of the vote. With the government in chaos, three successive chancellors failed to maintain control, and in late January 1933 Hindenburg named the 43-year-old Hitler as chancellor, capping the stunning rise of an unlikely leader. January 30, 1933 marked the birth of the Third Reich, or as the Nazis called it, the Thousand-Year Reich, after Hitler's boast that it would endure for a millennium. Reichstag Fire, the incident which led Hitler to autocratic power. After a devastating fire at Germany's parliament building, the Reichstag, in February 1933, possibly the work of a Dutch communist, though later evidence suggested Nazis set the Reichstag fire themselves, Hitler had an excuse to step up the political oppression and violence against his opponents. On March 23, the Reichstag passed the Enabling Act, giving full powers to Hitler and celebrating the union of National Socialism with the old German establishment. That July, the government passed a law stating that the Nazi party constitutes the only political party in Germany, and within months all non-Nazi parties, trade unions and other organizations had ceased to exist. His autocratic power now secure within Germany, Hitler turned his eyes toward the rest of Europe. By early 1934, Hitler had withdrawn Germany from the League of Nations and begun to militarize the nation in anticipation of his plans for territorial conquest. During the incident which is known as the Night of Long Knives, Hitler had his top officers murdered and appointed new commanding officers in their position. These new officers, being very afraid of Hitler's power, agreed to unite all leaderships into one command, the Führer. With overwhelming power, Hitler atrocities reached new heights. Deprivation of rights to Jews, fear personal rights as well as civil rights and finally torturing them in concentration camps, such were his crimes against humanity. Hitler's government also sought to establish the cultural dominance of Nazism by burning books, forcing newspapers out of business, using radio and movies for propaganda purposes and forcing teachers throughout Germany's educational system to join the party. What led to World War II? In March 1936, against the advice of his generals, Hitler ordered German troops to reoccupy the demilitarized left bank of the Rhine. Over the next two years, Germany concluded alliances with Italy and Japan, annexed Austria and moved against Czechoslovakia, all essentially without resistance from Great Britain, France or the rest of the international community. Once he confirmed the alliance with Italy in the so-called Pact of Steel in May 1939, Hitler then signed a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union. On September 1, 1939, Nazi troops invaded Poland, finally prompting Britain and France to declare war on Germany. Blitzkrieg, the Lightning War After ordering the occupation of Norway and Denmark in April 1940, 
Hitler adopted a plan proposed by one of his generals to attack France through the Ardennes forest. The Blitzkrieg, Lightning War, attack began on May 10. Holland quickly surrendered, followed by Belgium. German troops made it all the way to the English Channel, forcing British and French forces to evacuate en masse from Dunkirk in late May. On June 22, France was forced to sign an armistice with Germany. Hitler had hoped to force Britain to seek peace as well, but when that failed he went ahead with his attacks on that country, followed by an invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941. After the attack on Pearl Harbor that December, the United States declared war on Japan, and Germany's alliance with Japan demanded that Hitler declare war on the United States as well. At that point in the conflict, Hitler shifted his central strategy to focus on breaking the alliance of his main opponents, Britain, the United States and the Soviet Union. Concentration Camps Beginning in 1933, the SS had operated a network of concentration camps, including a notorious camp at Dachau, near Munich, to hold Jews and other targets of the Nazi regime. In addition to forced labor and mass execution, certain Jews at Auschwitz were targeted as the subjects of horrific medical experiments carried out by eugenicist Joseph Mengele, known as the Angel of Death. Mengele's experiments focused on twins and exposed 3,000 child prisoners to disease, disfigurement and torture under the guise of medical research. The End of World War II With defeats at El Alamein and Stalingrad, as well as the landing of U.S. troops in North Africa by the end of 1942, the tide of the war turned against Germany. As the conflict continued, Hitler became increasingly unwell, isolated and dependent on medications administered by his personal physician. Several attempts were made on his life, including one that came close to succeeding in July 1944, when Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg planted a bomb that exploded during a conference at Hitler's headquarters in East Prussia. Within a few months of the successful Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944, the Allies had begun liberating cities across Europe. That December, Hitler attempted to direct another offensive through the Ardennes, trying to split British and American forces. But after January 1945, he holed up in a bunker beneath the Chancellery in Berlin. With Soviet forces closing in, Hitler made plans for a last-ditch resistance before finally abandoning that plan. How did Hitler die? At midnight on the night of April 28 to 29, Hitler married Eva Braun in his bunker in Berlin. After dictating his political testament, Hitler shot himself in his suite on April 30th. Braun took poison. Their bodies were burned according to Hitler's instructions. Though this is believed to be true, many with Soviet troops occupying Berlin, Germany surrendered unconditionally on all fronts on May 7, 1945, bringing the war in Europe to a close. In the end, Hitler's planned thousand-year Reich lasted just over 12 years, but wreaked unfathomable destruction and devastation during that time, forever transforming the history of Germany, Europe and the world. And that's a wrap guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are a subscriber thanks for your support, and if you are not, make sure to subscribe for more videos and updates. Thank you for your time.